Hello, welcome to Flory Models Daily Vlog. Here we are on, where are we? We're the 7th of April, Thursday the 7th of April 2016. And today, to be honest, I've been doing lots of running around, lots of bits and pieces, lots of editing. Okay, so down here, as you can see, we've brought back from the dead some of the models we've had. I've done a video on it, it's around about 30 minutes. It's called Rebuild My Model, I think, or something else. I called it Rebuild and Repair. Uh, as you can see, the MIG, which is sort of takes uh, priority in this, uh, loose fit canopy, don't panic everyone. Uh, we talk about pinning the gear and all the bits and pieces like that. Okay, I've got a little clip of it just here, I think. Okay, so you can, sorry, wrong one, we want oh, that one. There we go. So that is actually talking about um, redoing the gear. So what I actually do with this particular one is pin it. So we talk about using brass tube um, and then actually, you know, pinning the gear, using super glue to put it in and then using weld action glues to weld it all up afterwards and then a flat coat really to knock it all back and uh, to get rid of any sort of shininess you've got from the glue and all those different areas. Sorry, you can't see too much of my hand in the way, which doesn't help, okay? But generally, this is the thing with this one. It's all about putting the models back together, not worrying about it too much, uh, and making your way through as we go right the way through them all. And if that klutz would get his hand out of the way, you could probably see it in there. Okay, so that's actually, oh, I'm actually drilling the holes there, okay, before it goes in. But as I say, there's a 30 minute video up there on that one. It talks about, obviously, all about doing it, how I did it, how I got on with it, and all the things like that. And then, to be honest, I just went round and did all the others. The uh, SU-25 went together particularly well, no problems at all. To be honest, it's a big chunky aircraft, which helps. Um, the plastic, where it all bent, I elected to cut it, re sort of jig it, and then super glue it and again weld it back together on things like nose gears because you can't really get pins in there it's too small and then we added all the photo etch bits that we could find because to be honest most of the photo etch of this particular one had come off we put all of those on pito tube same way we did the mig and all things like that same time i wasn't going to do it originally but i just couldn't help it i had to try and put it back together so we have put together the wing nut wings the trouble with this one though is the rigging which if you remember on this particular build we used um, the easy line. No, this is knitting in elastic. Got to remember myself. The knitting elastic is extremely stretchy. So when you're trying to like rejig and get wings in there and all the rest of it, it's extremely hard to do. And I had actually welded the uh, spars in there with weld action glue. So it wasn't like the super glue we were talking about. It just pings away. Oh no, these were in there properly. So with those ones, some of them I had to do a little bit of drilling work and then pin and then put the, the actual spars in there as we, you would do gear and all the rest of it. And then where the easy line had snapped and things like that, we had to then re-glue it back into position and take care of it like that. My only problem is I am missing the hubcap off of one side of the wheel because unfortunately it's gone walkabout and I can't find it anywhere and I've been through my cabinet and absolutely everything and I can't find anything on it. I do have to thank little Penny, bless her heart, my number one fan, for sending me a little card saying, uh, to Phil, sorry that your models got broken, love Penny, um, here's my dyno to cheer you up. And here he is, right here, fantastic job Penny. What I'm gonna do is, to be honest, he's just gonna take pride of place with my models. They're gonna go back in the cupboard, I've had a bit of a move around because I've taken the glass off to clean the gla all the glass work and put it in. And then your dyno is gonna have pride of place with these three models on their shelf in my display play cabinet so thank you very much penny love you sweetheart it's very thoughtful of you and i loved it getting through the post today um also just have to mention the uh, glass if you're cleaning glass i've got a tip for you don't use ipa i tried to use ipa and it welds itself on like glue and it's really hard to get off i highly recommend airbrush thinner okay this is the vallejo stuff goes on smear free not a single thing and it gets all the dust off in one and what i actually ended up doing was i was using a little bit of that on a brush okay dry brush it literally get all of it off and i've gone over all the models with them as well and it gets the dust off it gets off the glass particularly well and all the areas like that to be honest the phantom is in there uh went together no problem at all so my only thing was we lost or i think we're going to lose is the swordfish because the swordfish takes a lot of work purely because all of that rigging is photo etch and the photo etch is physically bent the wing on one side has been completely crushed so all the photo etch now doesn't even line up so really what you'd have to do is remove it all straighten it and put it all back in and that is a massive job to do at a latter stage of a model and you say there's a lot of photo etch for those so never say never but it's about to go and live in a box and clear some space down there uh, and all the rest of it but thank you for everybody's thoughts on that one i had loads of messages saying ah but you know at the end of the day 
when you sort of just throw yourself in, I'm a great believer, instead of just saying, oh hell, and throwing it, try and work through the problem. Don't get stressed with it, don't smash it up, just think, right, okay, how can I put this right? The other option, of course, you could do, if you're in a situation where you've smashed your gear off and you've got things missing, do it gear up, rebuild it gear up, stick it on a pile and you're good to go. No problem at all. But I thought the video might be quite interesting. You can have a look at the video and it talks about the techniques I used for it. And you know me, I don't flap around. Let's just get on with it, get it together. So it's literally super glue, kicker, and then a weld action glue, and then a flat coat afterwards just to take care of all the shiny spots you get from the glue and you're good to go. Uh, the other thing as well is this gorgeous little kit is up with you now. This is the Meng 135th scale Shilka or the ZSU 23-4. As you know, I'm a die-hard flight sim fan on DCS and the scourge of the A10 if you're underneath 9,000 feet. That's probably why I mention it. Got a little video up here. The I have to say that the detail uh, in the actual uh, plastic and the sharpness of the plastic, again, is absolutely amazing from Meng. I can find no problems with the kit whatsoever. There is tons of parts to this. And the great thing I like about this kit as well, there is lots of scope for doing different things because all the hatches open. You've got a driver's compartment and it's detailed as well. But also you can open up things like the actual storage bins and the weapon bins on the top for reloading and making a diorama with it. If you wanted to do it all opened up, you could do that as well. It lends itself particularly well. But even the small parts on the sprues, they're beautifully done. Very small gates. I couldn't find any flash, miss molds, or I couldn't find an ejector pin that was a problem uh, or over heavily done. It was extremely nice. So that review is up there now. It's around about 20 minutes long. Well worth having a look at. And the great thing is, of course, it's got the actual click tracks. So you just click them all together and then you put them on. None of this tack and rubbish of having to glue it and all things like that. Again, Meng have done a fantastic job. I think, although it went wrong for me last time, I do prefer the Terminator track having the pin and the rubber blocks because that works exceptionally well, very realistic. This isn't quite as realistic, I don't think, but it does work well. It's literally a click fit track, goes together, really simple. So if you're like me and you've always had problems with wheels and tracks, now by templating the wheels and click tracks, I am now a convert to armor. I love the stuff. It's very easy to use, very straightforward, and just saves you a world of hurt from having to go down aftermarket stuff if you don't want to go that way and all the rest of it. But it's lovely to see Meng tackling little subjects that, okay, have been covered before, but now we've got Meng's detail and quality and everything else on the kit, so that is particularly nice. The other thing I wanna talk about is Flow. Flow is, where's Forum? Forum is there. Flow is out and about. Uh, Flow is over with Hans at the moment. This is Hans's uh, office, as you can see. Flow on the desk, bless her. So he's over in Colorado in the US, Flo on Hans's workbench. Uh, obviously members, you'll know Hans's workbench extremely well. Uh, took a trip down to uh, Hobbytown, USA. Flo with some kits, as if Flo hasn't seen enough kits in her life, bless her, but there we go. Um, out for dinner, no, actually that's breakfast, uh, with the local IPMS chapter. Thank you guys, fantastic. And then Flo went flying, literally, come fly with me. No, I won't sing. Uh, with a United Airlines, courtesy of Heidi, which is Hans's partner, which I don't even see her down there, Flo being held up. And Flo in the cockpit, has made her way into the cockpit, her first flight around. So she's been around, she's got a little passport all filled out and all the bits and pieces like that. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Hans. That's a great job you did on that one. Uh, Flo is going to be making herself her way right the way around the world. I'm going to sort out the page tomorrow and definitely over the weekend where you can actually donate. It Basically, the way this is going to work is we're going to get as close to you as possible from member to member to member, okay? And then literally, when she is close as she can be to you, then it's a minimum £10 donation. Obviously, it goes to Snap, the kids' charity I'm heavily involved with, as you know. I like to do loads of fundraising for them every year. In the past, we've done raffles and giveaways and all the rest of it. But this year, Flo is going to hopefully do a couple of million miles and have an amazing tale to tell at the end of this one okay so at the moment she's currently in Colorado around that area there and then obviously what we're going to do is start to work around the US we're going to cover all the US Canada bits and pieces like that and then she's going to make her way completely around the world so if you would like to have Flo come to you and if you've got a sporting event or a, a, a monument or a landmark that everybody will be know it'd be great to get Flo to each one of these things okay so it'd be amazing if we can do something else like that to get her to sporting events and things like that I'm hoping Flo's going to make her way onto Flo decks and inside armor and various bits and pieces of as many tactical things as we do here as well that would be absolutely amazing so if you've got an idea you'd like to take flow somewhere 
and then show her off to the world and have a little bit of fun with it and everything else like that please get in contact via the site and we'll be sure to arrange something and everything else like that but I will get the page properly sorted out Hans has done one he's done a fantastic job for his one but I need to get another one on the main site with obviously how you can donate as well so minimum donations are tenor to get flow to you but obviously you're more than happy to donate more if you want to that'd be absolutely fantastic so that's it from me uh, my plans are I'm going to do the my next review which will be up with you tomorrow which is going to be the Meng uh, DR9 is it the big bulldozer the armoured one I've got that one in for a kit review looks like an absolutely stunning kit and then I'm going to start work on the actual airliner I've been stalled a bit project obviously been away but what we're going to do is play with mixing paint in this particular video on this one and then about masking as well and then hopefully we're going to be able to get the two-tone blue Thompson's markings on this one and then we're going to come in with all the metal work and everything else might even use bare metal foil for a change things like that okay so we've got plenty of that coming up and that'll be up with you on monday all right so that one is up and then obviously next week we're going to be pushing on heavily with the halifax where we're going to be doing fantastic normal two-tone RAF camo on the top but black underneath so it's got lots of things we can do down there how to weather black spray black how to break it up and make it all look very realistic and everything else and then on that particular one i'm going to do a heavy job of oiling up the engines getting that nice lead fuel streaks down it with oil and everything else that happened to those early Merlin engines on the Halifax and everything else like that. So that's it from me. Back on track now. Models put back together. We're going to get them all in the cabinet and everything else and just push on with normal life now and move forward. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll catch you all tomorrow.